What's going on guys? It's Quizzy Dog here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a quick look at the MSI GP76 Leopard for 2021. All that and more right after a word from today's video sponsor. If you guys are looking for an affordable Windows 10 key, then you need to do yourselves a favor and check out VIPSCDKey.com. Using the link within the description below, as well as the coupon code GG20, you will have yourselves a brand new Microsoft Windows 10 Pro OEM CD key for as little as $15.82. What are you waiting for? Use that link within the video description and thank you VIP SCD key for sponsoring today's video. All right, so welcome back guys. And like I mentioned before, today we're taking a very quick look at the 2021 GP76 Leopard from MSI. And we've looked at MSI laptops a couple of different times on this channel, but I have to say that this one feels like it's doing everything right. And not to say that the other ones necessarily weren't, but I find that this has removed a lot of the unnecessary features from some of the other featured uh, laptops on the channel. And it's really gone with more of a all around appeal as far as the design is concerned. So let's first jump right into the specifications and see exactly what this guy is running. Under the hood, we do have a 10th generation i7-10750H. This guy is a six core 12 thread processor running at right around 2.6 gigahertz, turboing of course up to five gigahertz in speed. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz. This does have two DIMM slots and neither one of the DIMM slots are kind of soldered on. So you can remove both those sticks and upgrade this to a maximum of 64 gigabytes if you would like. The NVMEs are pretty much the same story. This unit does have a one terabyte NVMe SSD. We do have two slots under the hood, so you could occupy the second one for either additional storage or to run a RAID 0 configuration to make this unit even faster. Now, the shining star on this computer in particular is the GPU. We are running the brand new RTX 2070 eight gigabyte GPU. And it's running surprisingly very well. Um, now, I don't know if it was NVIDIA or MSI or a combination of the both, but I find that the uh, NVIDIA lineup changes the way that it likes to be announced every year. So we've seen Max-Q variants before, we've seen different labeling. In this case, it's not a Max-Q um, specifically, it is a laptop variant. So of course, RTX 3070 eight gigabyte laptop GPU. And that of course is pushing all the graphics up to the 17 inch display. Now at first I was taken aback a little bit, a 1080p display with an RTX 3070. I figured, well, why didn't they go with something that was quad HD or 1440p, something like that. But once I actually started testing this unit, it, it quickly came to life exactly what MSI was after with this model. So this display is a three millisecond IPS, 17 inch display, 1080p like we mentioned before. It is running at 144 Hertz. So for anybody that's playing more competitive games, you can lightly dial back some of the settings and we're gonna see within some of the video benchmarks in just a little bit exactly what we're pulling at max settings for frames, but dialing down max settings just a little bit on an RTX 3070 will allow you to hit the above 100 FPS mark, if not that full 144 and in some titles a lot more, giving you a nice compatible or competitive edge, I should say. Um, SRBG, <laughs> SRGB coverage, not as good as I'd like it to be. It's 89%, but this is of course a gaming focused computer and a little lacking maybe in the creative space. We do have USB-C and HDMI out on this, so you could hook this up to a color accurate monitor and maybe do some Photoshop, some video editing, different things like that, because the hardware will definitely support all of that and more. Now, moving down from the display itself, we do have the keyboard deck and just the deck of the laptop itself. 
Overall, it is just hard plastic, but there's very little flex, which is nice. We have that same Steel Series offering, the per key RGB backlit keys that we see time and time again with these MSI collaborations. And typing experience, very, very nice. It's 17 inch, so we do have a full size number pad on the right hand side as well. And then this year, they did shrink the trackpad just a little bit, although I do prefer the sizing of this trackpad compared to some of the larger ones we've seen in the past. And they did remove the left and right mouse click. So we are just left with the tactile clicks built into the trackpad itself, but everything works well. The placement's in a good spot as well. Little off center to the left compared to being right directly in the middle where my palm would normally rest. So overall, very, very happy with the upper deck of the unit itself. Uh, I do wanna quickly as well go over the ports that are around. So on the left-hand side, which would be this guy here, we do have just a single USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and your multi-jack, so a headphone and microphone jack. On the right-hand side, we have dual USB-A. They as well are 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And then on the back is something that's actually pretty unique. And I love that the main IO is in the back. It, it truly shows that we're coming away from laptops having everything on the side, using the side maybe more for cooling, and then having the back as almost your dock. So when you plug it all in, you can fish the cables, let's say behind a desk or something like that. And it, it just lends to a cleaner experience. But on the back, of course, we do have a USB-C. Uh, this is a 3.2 Gen 2 um, or DisplayPoint 1.4. Uh, we do have Gigabit LAN on the back as well, and then your HDMI out. Now the HDMI is just HDMI 2.0, so don't expect 2.1 to put anything a high refresh rate 4K onto an external display. And then we do have your power inlet. Now, again, I like that the power inlet is coming away from the old circular design that I found bend and broke quite often on older laptops. And we do have a more substantial fitting, which is absolutely fantastic. Maybe more on the proprietary side, but I mean, we've got to have some give and take there as well. So looking at the underside, I mean, it's just the underside of a laptop. I was gonna take this all apart and actually show you guys the inner workings, but at the end of the day, Nothing really changes. We're gonna see that there's a module, of course, that supports the uh, Wi-Fi 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6, as well as the Bluetooth 5.1 support. We talked about the dual NVMEs and then the dual um, DIMM slots as well for the RAM. Now, this is using that traditional um, Cooler Boost 5, I believe MSI calls it. So this is a combination of two fans left and right with six copper heat pipes. And this does a fantastic job at controlling temperature. Now, they are small fans. This is a laptop. So the fans, when they ramp up, they can get very, very loud. Uh, but the trade-off is we are seeing thermal limits kind of at least down from their peak. I didn't see any thermal throttling in my testing uh, throughout gaming and some productivity with this guy. And then when temperatures went up, they very quickly came back down, which was fantastic as well. We saw most often across a couple of the games that I tested, the CPU really didn't reach any more than 85 to 90 degrees, that's Celsius. We're looking at an operating temperature maximum on the i7-10750H at right around the 100 mark. So we're creeping up, but we're definitely not meeting that threshold. And this is a laptop, so it's, it's nice to see that we're not meeting that and we're not getting throttled down. The GPU, again, we have safe operating temperatures to a maximum of about 93 degrees and the cooling system within this laptop never ever exceeded 70 degrees and that was with DLL, DLSS, that's with uh, ray tracing, that's with everything boosted to ultra, really as hard as I could push this and that's going through some stress tests as well. So really, really good cooling system and that's one thing that I really like that MSI is continuously done year over year very well. Um, aesthetics, just to go over that very quickly as well, very minimal. Now, the GP series, this is a gaming series, of course, but they've finally kind of ditched, and I'm gonna maybe show you guys here, they've ditched the external LEDs, they've 
ditched kind of the racing stripes. This is just a, a clean black laptop, nice angular lines, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, we don't have uh, an obscure amount of buttons on the deck either. In the past, I've seen MSI offerings have like a fan boost button and all of the, this different stuff. We have just your traditional keyboard. We have a physical power button that's backlit as well, which is really nice. But overall, just a nice, clean, crisp design. And this design is definitely something that I can get behind. It's not shouting in your face, but at the end of the day, it's what's inside that, that makes it so worth it. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to talk about some of these benchmarks and then maybe give you guys some closing thoughts here as well. So the benchmarks, I've actually already produced two quick videos. I figured if I was going to make these, I might as well make them so you guys can follow along and see the footage as well. But we did two different benchmarks, one with ray tracing off, just seeing exactly what we could get as a maximum frame output from the RTX 3070 laptop GPU. We tested this across five games and I've got a little cheat sheet right here. We're gonna go over some of these FPS and I'm gonna put maybe a, a grid or, or something on the display so you guys can see everything. Uh, but we tested first uh, Dirt 5. Dirt 5 got right around 98 frames per second, which we're, we're, our goal here is 60 or above. And again, this is all in their ultimate or their uh, ultra settings. If you do want any of these games to push that 100 FPS mark and go all the way up to, let's say, that 144 FPS or 144 hertz ceiling that the um, display has to offer, just bring some of these settings down. But for the most part, all of these presets are 1080p at their maximum ultra that they can run. So Dirt 5, we add about 98 frames per second. Doom Eternal, I mean, that was just crazy mind blowing. We hit an average of about 200 to 205 FPS. Control Ultimate, we are running this at give or take about 100 FPS on average. Cyberpunk, yes, this well play Cyberpunk, and it actually does it fairly well. We're looking at 1080p Ultra running at about 65 frames, and then Call of Duty Warzone ran about an average of, I would say, 95 to 100. We can split that and just say about 96, 97 FPS, which overall, again, if you do want more frames in that game, just bring down the settings a little bit. It's not a big deal. The only thing that I did turn off was motion blur. Uh, everything else we just left at the ultra presets. Now, the second set of benchmarks, we actually went and we pulled five RTX capable titles. We ran it at the default uh, ray tracing settings. So everything on maximum in ray tracing. Again, if you want slightly better performance, you can bring that down just a hair as well. But then any game that had DLSS, we did enable that as well and put that into performance mode. And that really helped a lot. So we're looking at Cyberpunk again. This is an RTX title. We're looking at this obtaining roughly about 60 frames per second. Fortnite, exact same story. Looking at this with the ray tracing set as high as it would go and DLSS set to performance. We're getting roughly about 60 FPS average in highly populated areas. We saw jumps as far as a maximum of about 85 FPS when we're just traversing the map. If you do want to push this above 100 FPS, very easy to just downgrade some of these settings and you're now into a more competitive orientation. Uh, control, again, we're hitting an average about 60 FPS and, and you're going to see that repeated quite often here. Uh, Warzone, a little bit better. We're looking at about an 80 FPS average. And then Wolfenstein, we just took a look at the built-in benchmarks. We added the two scores together, divided that by two, and we got an average of about 104 FPS. Now, those numbers are fantastic and actually better than I expected. Uh, most of this, with the exception of Warzone, which doesn't have this setting, uh, most of the saving graces for these games with the RTX 3070 was the DLSS set to performance mode. Now, without that, we were seeing dips like into the 30s, which, I mean, is still playable, but at the end of the day, I would not sacrifice frames for quality. You can very easily bring down some of the settings and, and really still maintain at least a baseline of 60 FPS at 1080p on this unit with 
everything kind of scaled accordingly. But the nice thing is there's really nothing that you have to sacrifice in all these titles. We're, we're hitting that 60. And then in, in some regards, we're going above 100, which is absolutely fantastic. And I love to see that. Taking a look at some other benchmarks, we did run a Time Spy that's hitting 94.45. We did Fire Strike Extreme that's pulling numbers at 12, uh, 12,392 or 395. I'm, I'm going to put the screenshots up on the display as well. Uh, we did run an R32 benchmark through Cinebench, uh, both single and multi. Uh, single core, we're looking at 1134 and multi-core running at 7627. So overall, really good results from this laptop. And I guess my closing thoughts with this one, uh, I took a look um, even before I received this and it's, it's set my expectations above what they were previously when I was just looking at specs and looking at availability because the price of this unit, the price of this laptop with uh, you know a 10th generation i7, uh, 10750H, again, your 16 gigabytes of RAM and NVMe SSD and specifically as well um, an RTX 3070 with a high refresh rate monitor, this is actually pulling an MSRP lower than most of my expectations. And given that it cools so well, it works so well, size is pretty good. 17 inch isn't going to be the most portable, but I mean, I think it's a give and take, a love hate. It is still very portable, but don't expect much battery life. I, I should have mentioned that before as well. You're looking at if this is set up without the battery saving mode enabled in the Dragon Center software, you're looking at like an average of maybe an hour if you're gaming, maybe 35, 40 minutes, um, but it's a big unit you're gonna have this plugged in 90% of the time. And there is the power optimization modes there as well that's gonna turn off the 3070. It's going to use the integrated graphics. It's going to undervolt everything. It's going to ramp down those fans and you're gonna get more time. But for the most part, you're not spending the money on these specifications to expect to use this as a mobile unit. You're gonna take this to work. You're gonna take this into your office. You're gonna take this to a friend's house. You're gonna plug it in and you're gonna use it to its full potential. I had the gaming mode enabled like 24 seven for extreme performance. And that's where we ran all those benchmark numbers as well and got all the results that we did. Um, but I wasn't expecting the results given the MSRP. Again, this is shooting under what I would have expected it to be. And when we take a look at where the industry has taken us right now with uh, GPU prices, I have a rig just over here, my main desktop PC that I use with my TV as a monitor. I've been looking for an RTX card since they were released. And I just, I can't find one for the life of me. What are available more often than not are all-in-one solutions or like laptops like this that have similar hardware inside. You're running this laptop variant, it's said to be about 80% of the power that you would expect from the desktop unit. So it's only about a 20% loss. But the crazy thing is these cards, when you do find them, if you're buying them, let's say from a reseller, you're looking at a two to 2.5 times markup. And instead of paying that price, for me anyway, to maybe get a 3070 of my own and put into my Ryzen system, I can take all of that money and I could actually invest in a laptop that has all of that, has a 10th generation i7 and all of these other things that make this such a compelling all-in-one solution. And I mean, I may still be saving money, which is ludicrous to think about. So, those are kind of my final thoughts and my, my benchmarks and just my findings with the GP76 um, Leopard. I'll put a purchase link within the video description if you guys do want to check out pricing and availability. I wish I had more time to spend with this. Again, I had some complications in my personal life that meant that out of the couple of weeks I had this, I actually only got maybe a couple of days of testing. But in those couple of days, I absolutely loved it. I can't find a darn thing wrong with this unit, which is fantastic. I love the way that it looks. I love its design. I love pretty much everything about it. Uh, would have liked a little bit more color accuracy from the monitor, but given that this isn't, again, in their like creator series, this is something that's made primarily for gaming. At least we have a fantastic high refresh rate, 
three millisecond delay IPS panel and, and we're catering towards that gaming audience with the RTX 3070. So I get it. Um, I'm just, I'm being a little bit more critical, I think, than I need to be. Uh, but overall, absolutely love this unit. Um, I wish I could keep it, as I always say when these things come into the office. But yeah, overall, show you guys again. Here we have it. This is the GP76 from MSI. I like it, I dig it, and that's the end of the video. So if you like to go ahead and hit that like button, jump into the comments as well, and let me know if there's anything else that you want tested in the future or any feedback that you might have about this video. We just kind of ramble. I mean, I've just got like a cheat sheet with a couple of notes here, but I just want to talk to you guys genuinely. That's what I like doing, and I hope that's what you guys like as well. But until my next video, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome, and we'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.